So for part A, we need to find the flux going through the square. So we need to find the flux, which is equal to the integral of the magnetic field dot a tiny piece of the surface. And this surface element, this dA, is going to be a vector, and it's going to point in the direction that's perpendicular to the surface. So you can kind of imagine a membrane stretched over this square, and then dA is going to be perpendicular to this membrane. And then B, B is going to be the magnetic field, and it's going to be equal to this expression here. So R, U is going to be the distance from the wire. So if you draw a loop around the wire, R is going to be the distance from the wire. And using the right-hand rule, you know it's going to point in this direction, so it's going to cir circle around the loop. And once it reaches the square, you can see that from the right-hand rule, it's going to point outside of the page. So you can find a derivation of this formula here earlier in the book, I think in chapter 5. So I'm not going to repeat the derivation here. So first thing you can notice immediately is that dA and the magnetic field both point in the same direction. So we can actually get rid of the dot product and just concern ourselves with the magnitude because both of them are pointing outside of the page. So I can just substitute this expression here. So dA, we can actually find dA by chopping up this square like this and then adding up these individual slices. So the area of this individual slice is going to be equal to the length a multiplied by the height. So let's call this height uh, dr. So you can kind of imagine an r, r axis over here in this direction. So a is going to be a dA is going to be equal to A times dr. And the R is going to go from S all the way to S plus A. So you see that R is going to be our magnitude. So you see why I used R here. So R, you can imagine kind of like an axis over here. So integrating this is easy enough. I can pull out all the constants. I'm going to integrate a natural log, uh, integrate at 1 over R. That's going to be equal to natural log of R. And then substituting the numbers in, you will arrive at this expression. So this is the answer to part A. This is the amount of flux going through the square. Now in part B, we need to find the EMF. So for part B, we're being told that this square is being pulled in this direction. And then that there's going to be a change in flux. And that's going to result in an EMF, which is going to result in a current. So the EMF is going to be the change in flux with respect to time. So let's uh, so I'm going to put an absolute value here. So normally sometimes you'd see a negative sign. So that's just going to be related to the direction of the current. So right now I'm just going to concern us uh, concern ourselves with the magnitude. So taking the derivative of this expression, I can just pull out all the constants first. And then we'll be differentiating this term. And then we're going to apply the chain rule. So don't forget the absolute value sign. So I'm going to apply the chain rule. So first of all, I'm going to treat this as one, <coughs> one single variable. So natural log of something, if you take the derivative, it's just going to be one over of that something. So one over of this expression, we get this. And then we take the time derivative of whatever we had inside. So let's just copy out what we just what we have. So s divided by s plus a. And then now we're going to have to use a quotient rule. So we're going to take the derivative of this upper term. So it's going to be ds ds dt. So let's write that as s dot. So ds dt is equal to s dot. So it's just a shorthand for for the de time derivative. So I'm going to take the derivative of this upper term, multiply by the lower term. So that's just the quotient rule. Minus the derivative of the lower term, so ds dt again, once again, s dot, times s plus a. And divide it by s squared. So that's just applying the quotient rule. So you see that then s it cancels out. s plus a. So you see an s dot times s and an s dot times s, so both of these cancel out. So all we're left with is this expression over here. And then s dot, s dot is going to, going to be the change in s. 
And then we're told that the loop is being dragged away with a velocity of v, right? With a speed of v. So ds dt is going to be equal to v. So we can just substitute that in. So I'm going to get rid of the absolute value sign and just change everything to positive. So plus a times s. So this is going to be the EMF induced in the in the loop. And then uh, the direction, you can kind of uh, imagine the if you take the flux uh, coming out, uh, if you take the magnetic field coming out of the pointing out of the page as positive flux, you'll see that once you drag this away, the magnetic field is going to become weaker. That's why the magnetic field pointing outside of the square is going to decrease, so flux is going to decrease. And so nature is going to try to restore that decrease in flux by inducing a current that is going to lead to an increase in the flux. So it's going to balance out the decrease. So in order for that to happen, you can just apply your right hand rule to see that the current has to go in this direction, so it's counterclockwise. So it's going to go in this direction. So that is part B. So for part C, what happens if the loop is pulled to the right? So if you pull to the right, we pull in this, this direction, there's going to be no change in flux. So it's just going to remain the same, so nothing is going to happen. There's no induced EMF.